lavish to the day that I die. Spring has thawed out the long bitter winter. The water is clear and the skies are blue. I'm standing in the middle of the Beaver Kill River. I might even catch and release one or two. Well, some folks like horses, cats or dogs. With a rod and a fly Yes, fishing is a favorite That's the time of mine If I couldn't do it I think I would cry Well, life is good When I'm wading a river it Gets even better When I cast a fly If I catch a trout It don't really matter It's fun just to be here And give it a try Koski style. Hey folks, welcome to today's show. Um, my name is Kurt, Curtis Mayfly and this is Riffles and Waves and I, I hope you uh, enjoy today's show. And start those recorders because today we're going to be doing a light Cahill um, parachute and this is a Mike Bukowski technique style that I learned from him and we're going to be tying that today. So uh, um, I hope you get get your recorder ready and get your fly tying kits out, and we're going to start uh, right in today. I'm going to be using some micro fibers. These are like paintbrush bristles, bristles, I guess. Uh, we're going to be using some polypropylene wing material, and you can find that at Gander Mountain or any other fly tying area. I like this uh, uh, yellowish uh, color. It's very easy to see on the stream. I'm going to be using a cream or light thread not quite a sulfur color but a, a creamed color I'm going to be using uh, the microfibers and oh and my hackle I'm going to just use one of these uh, lighter colored hackles off of this this neck right here and there's some light ones right here so we're going to be using some of these so let's uh, get right get right into it today let's get started I'm going to put my hook in there and I'm going to start wrapping my thread around as usual wrap it around and then back over itself and then and this is a fine wire nymph so you can see how the hook bends so it's a little tricky you got to be careful here and not pull too tight but tight enough and get back to the bend and because we're using microfibers we're going to need to make a ball of thread at the bend here so I'm going to just build up a ball of thread like so and nip this off okay now we're going to take our microfibers and we don't need a whole lot just a few 
just enough display. We're going to measure that the length of the shank, okay? So there's our tail. We're going to pinch it and trim this excess off and pinch method so it stays on top and just wrap forward and get it on there. Now we're going to wrap back to the bend with that ball of thread and if we're lucky it will cause pressure on that ball and splay those feathers out. See how they got splayed out? See that? Okay. Now, a lot of folks will tie the parachute in uh, at this point. Uh, me, I wait till I get there. But I'm going to take a little bit of this sulfur dubbing. We don't need a lot. Just enough to make the body. And it can be pretty fine. We're just going to spin that on nice and easy. And some people are so deathly afraid of dubbing. I don't know why. It's one of the easiest things to, to master in fly tying. We'll get that on there. Wrap it up. A little bit more. Okay, we're right about to where the thorax is. Now we're going to take and loosely wrap over that abdomen with our thread. This tightens it right down. Makes a beautiful abdomen. And we're going to come forward. Okay, so now we're right where we're going to put our parachute. Now, I've got some of this polypropylene, and it's pretty thick. We don't need that much. I'm going to split it down a little bit and just make a nice, nice amount there so that we can work on it. Trim off the bottom, making sure it's nice and straight. I'm going to pinch it on top and do a couple of good wraps, tight wraps there, and pull it forward and wrap around it and make a thread dam around the back there. That helps hold that uh, material up. Now is the, the tricky part is to actually wrap around that post. And this takes some practice. You can have all kinds of problems doing this. But it's, uh, it's a trick all to itself. Oh, see what I mean? And you just wrap around there and make a nice post. And it doesn't hurt to go up a little ways. Now if you don't have to do it whatever way you can do it, but this is a lot easier having a rotating vise. And we get that on top of that hook. Make sure it's standing up nice and straight. Go around it a couple of times. Now we're going to take real tiny hackle here. We don't need really long stuff. We're just going to take, uh, I'll probably just use one of these today, but you can use two. Okay. We're going to trim it off and we're going to make this kind of long. It seems like a, a pretty long uh, bare spot there, but we're going to tie that on top of the fly. on top of the hook in front of our post okay so it's right there so we're going to tie that on right there there's our hackle there's our post okay now we're going to do our thorax which is more dubbing and this can be pretty thick and it helps to have it to be um, pretty bulky the fly floats better and it looks better when you're done. It looks more realistic. Now we're not going to be tying around the eye so I can really crowd that eye pretty good. And then come back and around our post and up and over the top. Okay, So we're, our thread is on our side towards us and the post is straight up and the hackle is on this my side towards me. Now I'm just going to wrap this around without and hope it doesn't break and do that a couple of times 
and bring each wrap down the post. So we're going to start high and that bare shank or the bare part of that, that uh, feather actually you want to wrap it once around the post without any hackle and that helps you get a, a nice nice post. So we're going to get as much out of this feather as we can and wrap down. And we're going to get in front there. I'm going to turn this. Now I'm going to take my thread, which has been in front here, and bring it up and under all these wraps. Go around a couple of times. And then you can let go. Okay. Now the secret here is we're going to bring this thread through the hackle up to the top of the, where the post starts. And that's where we're going to tie off. So we're going to pull tight. We're going to do a half hitch real quick around the post and slide it down. Do another one and slide it down. And we can cut our thread. We can cut our hackle. And we're going to use a little drop of that uh, zappa gap. I'm going to use a little bit of the zap gap. I'm going to put a drop on my bench. And if you're tying a lot of flies, one drop of that zappa gap will, will be good for a bunch of flies. So I'm going to take some of that zappa gap and just touch the thread so that it glues the thread and doesn't absorb up the post. We don't want that post turning into a hunk of plastic. Now, I'm just going to simply trim off my post where I want it. And that looks good right there. There you go. Nice little parachute, light Cahill. You can use that as a sulfur. That's a dry fly. So that's your first dry fly. And when you tie this fly, you can change the colors. You can use an olive thread with hair's ear body dubbing and different color tail material and so on and so forth. So you can do the same technique and just match, match the fly to the hackle you use. I could tie a grizzly one. I could tie a brown one. I could tie a black one. I could tie any color fly, mayfly I want using this same technique. And you vary the size of the hooks. This is a size 16. You could tie these on 18s, which is a little tricky or even smaller. You could tie a blue winged olive like this if you wanted. Um, any number of flies can be tied with this technique. And this is all you really need to know. If you know how to tie this parachute, you can tie any fly there is, uh, any mayfly that's out there. You just vary the size of the hook and the color of the material. So there you have it, folks. We just tied a uh, light Cahill parachute in the Mike Bukowski style. Now, as a special treat, I have uh, Mike Bukowski uh, will be here next week doing a whole show, and he will tie some of these parachutes. And he will tie some March Browns and some other funny emergers and other flies that are really phenomenal for the Delaware River system. So, I hope you uh, learned something today on, on tying uh, a light Cahill. And again, it's, it's a, the materials are tricky, but it, with practice you can tie any fly uh, now from any book. So if you know how to use this, do this pattern, the hare's ear nymph and the woolly bugger, you can pretty much create any color, any type fly you, you need to know. And it's just practice. It's just tying, sitting down and tying hundreds of flies. Now, as I said, Mike Bukowski will be here next week uh, doing a whole show on fly tying. So you want to make sure you're here for next week's show. Now, um, one thing I also want to talk about is I've got, uh, if you go to my website, you'll find a link there that says uh, a PDF file for Book of the West Branch Flies. I'm putting together a book of West Branch Flies. If you have a pattern 
that works on the East Branch or the Beaverkill or the Del any part of the Delaware, that's fine. This book, I want to be a resource for people who come and visit this area and they know what flies they need, what flies will work. They may have flies in their boxes that already work. So if they come from California to here, they're prepared to be successful on their trip as they visit our wonderful resource, uh, the Delaware and the Catskills uh, that we have here. So if you want to send me a fly and fill out the form on how you tied it and put your name and everything on there, I will add that to my collection. Now, I imagine this is going to take a couple years to, to do, but um, I would appreciate it if you sent me a fly, and I will use that to take a picture of. So they will see your fly in this book. We'll have a nice photograph, explanation on how to tie it, how to fish it. If you got special instructions, throw that in there. Um, and again, take part uh, in this book uh, effort. Um, because it's it's our it's our New York State, and we want other people to come here, and and fish it, and learn about it, and in in so doing, they will be more inclined to say, you know, that Delaware is a wonderful reef resource. We need to help protect it. So even though they're out west and walk on in Mo Montana or whatever, they've had some experience here because they came here and fished it, and they were successful. So they're going to know that this is important to protect as well as the rivers out west. So it's all part of the, the plan here to be conservationist. And if we can make people have a, a high quality experience in the outdoors, they will then be concerned with protecting it and making sure it stays that way for a long, long time. If people don't have good quality experiences, and, and I don't mean just necessarily going out and catching a lot of fish or canoeing and just having a, a nice day. I mean, going out and experiencing the wildlife, seeing the deer, the bear along the river, the fish in the stream, the swans and, the, and all the, uh, the waterfowl and all these creatures that make the bald eagles and, and the other creatures like that, that make the Catskills a wonderful place. So it's all part of the plan. This is part of my plan is to help you have high quality experiences in the outdoors. Okay, so this is very important that you get a fly tying kit, learn how to tie flies, learn how to fly fish, get out there and experience these, these wonderful, uh, this wonderful habitat that we have so close to us. And hopefully you'll become as concerned as I am about this habitat and try to protect it. Um, there's a lot of things coming up in, in this year, um, environmentally, uh, that we need to be concerned with. Nestle's, uh, uh, you know, you think of them as making candy bars. Well, they're one of the largest water bottling uh, companies there are um, uh, in, the, in the United States. And they want to put, they're putting up four plants in New York State. One up on the Tug Hill Plateau, they've already bought the property there. One out in Rochester area and one somewhere else. And one across the street from the Catskill Fly Fishing Museum. So this is important. This is an important year. It's not just an election year. It's an important year for us to get involved with all these things. Another problem uh, that we're facing is the Bel Air Ski Resort. Trout Unlimited has signed on to the initial plan to reduce the size of this uh, giant uh, development at the Bel Air Ski Slope. Now, <coughs> I understand these folks have a right to make money and so on and so forth, but this giant project is huge. It was three 18-hole golf courses and uh, 600 or 700 or 800 condos, something like that. A really, really huge place. Now, there's uh, a lot of websites out there. One is savethemountain.com. Uh, you can also go to DEC and find out how you can, uh, DEC's website, and find out how you can uh, send commentary about the Beller Ski Slope's proposal, whether you're for it or against it. Um, I'm not here to tell you one way or the other, but Trout Unlimited has signed on to one uh, part of this giant proposal because the deadline was down. The, there was a deadline and we had to sign 
either si uh, say we, we what we did was we reduced the size of it and we made them uh, set aside 1200 acres as wild forest uh, they're also going to be using environmentally sound modes of transportation throughout the golf course so there's um, uh, some important things that we got in place there and the golf courses are going to be uh, environmentally sound and there's going to be uh, what's going to happen is they're going to this is a steep slope so when they clear cut and they cut these these uh, the forest to make these condos they're going to have to have settling ponds and all kinds of environmental uh, protection in place to protect the Usopas Creek so uh, what I'm hoping for is that uh, this project uh, with the plan that we signed will be more environmentally sound than initially so this project's going in whether we like it or not uh, our goal was to reduce the environmental impacts and hold them to uh, some mandates as far as that goes so if you want to get involved look up uh, Bel Air Ski Slope and DEC's website and SaveTheMountain.com's website and make your comments known uh, we, we stopped we, we reduced the size uh, of this project, Trout Unlimited has, and some other groups, uh, but there's still another watershed that's being impacted. So what what we need is we need folks to who are concerned to voice their comments and stop this project if possible, or even reduce it further uh, in size. So uh, there's a lot of things you can do out there. There's a lot of things we need to do out there. Uh, but again, this is this is fly fishing. Uh, and, and hopefully, if you get out there and catch some fish and enjoy the outdoors, you'll be concerned with the environment as I am. And we'll, we'll, we'll get some of these things done, like stop uh, the huge uh, developments at Bel Air, uh, protect uh, the flows in the Delaware uh, with New York City's uh, water supply. We, we've, got, we've got a lot of things to do. And we also got the kids' uh, f fishing camp. Uh, we got the kids fishing derby in May. We got the cleanup on the last Saturday in April down on the Delaware. We've got the TU, um, the local chapter of TU's banquet in, in March. So we've got a lot of things coming up here in this year of 2008. I'm very excited. And that's all I have for today's show. So uh, we'll see you next week with Mike Bukowski will be here. He'll be tying some awesome flies, so you make sure you want to see that show. So, till then, uh, keep on tying. Keep on tying in the free world. I don't have a big truck, so I have to pack light and utilize space wisely. The advantage of this is it has spring steel in it, and it's built around a chair, such as you'd see at soccer or football games, shown here and it also has a spring steel so when I put it on my sled it compresses tight so I could fit everything on there and it'll fit in my car with ease. It's really easy to set up here. I use a three man because I never fish alone and I always have people coming with me and if they don't dress warm enough they can always go in the shelter. So this is a fairly easy setup. It's a pack shack. It's a three-man shelter. All you do is you sit in the chair and then just flip it over just like that. And it's really lightweight so you're not dragging hundreds of pounds of gear with you. If you have an ATV or you have a truck or you're going short distances there's additional shelters on the market that are sled based and will be easy to transport your gear but they're also heavy. I, when I pick out ice fishing gear and equipment I want it to be lightweight. And this concludes the show for today. I hope all the clothing and gear I explained to you helped you out so you become a more successful fisherman who's also warm and also you'll hopefully catch more fish with all the gear I mentioned. Hope to see you out there and be warm, be safe and catch a lot of fish.
The hills are alive with the sound of music. <laughs>